Oh, Maureen Brodel, sorry. Uh, just a question, if you, if you can answer it. What is your position on secondary references? Because that seems to me to complicate things enormously because you don't only have secondary, you have tertiary references. And just even administratively identifying all those and making sure those were available free online would be, I just don't even know how you begin to go about complying with that. Well, again, on the face of the statute, it says we cannot incorporate by reference something that is not available for free. On its face, the only document we are incorporating by reference is the one that we it's know is standard. available for free. It's the principal the standard, principal not document. the second. But you're raising an issue that is also important to us. It's not just what the statute says. We are concerned with whether the public has access to what we're talking about. We're not just thinking about the regulated entities. Somebody made a comment this morning about building codes, and I remember wanting to get the building code to build a deck, and I had to buy it if I wanted it. So we're, we're concerned about that. And we don't have, we, we've learned an awful lot of valuable information. People have all been helpful today. We don't have a solution to the overall problem, however, yet. At least we don't have a solution to recommend our, to our bosses. But it might be that come January 1st, we just stop incorporating by reference that any document that is not available for free on the Internet. But to follow up with your point, um, we have um, certainly sought out feedback that people are willing to give to the extent some of those secondary and tertiary references are international standards are, or are not out, sort of outside the scope of the people in this room today, we really welcome feedback on what do we do about that. I mean, I know ASME and, and several other conferences and workshops have mentioned that um, they include international standards and have licensing arrangements. I'm not sure what the scope of those are, but they have third party kind of arrangements with um, others to incorporate their copyrighted materials as well. So I, I think to Neil's point, that's a discussion and comment option for all of the folks who would be affected by us incorporating um, these primary or principal standards that may have others' that, rights a, embedded. That's a very important point we haven't even really touched on. I believe, and again, again, department-wide, and I believe it's also true in some of the pipeline regulations, we have international standards we are required to comply with. We cannot make those available for free. Anybody got solutions? Raise your hand. We'd like to hear it. Um, we don't know what we're going to do about that. We, we haven't got a, a, a good handle on it. It's probably more of a problem in the other transportation modes and in the hazmat side of FEMSA where the stuff is involved in international transportation. But pipelines do cross borders. Mm -hmm. So I, there are probably some international standards that we may not be able to incorporate by reference but are obligated to have our industries comply with. And we are told those organizations will not sell the copyright to their standards. Again, part of the thing that somebody, somebody in one of the panels this morning mentioned the fact that we are different from the rest of the world and the way we work with standard setting organizations. And it's a little easier for other, for other governments to do what they have to do and use the standards and make them available than it is for us to do that. 